move on to uh, the next part of this assignment, which is actually working with type and appearance panel. An appearance panel, you can do a lot of things and that you may have not thought about. So I will select my Arbor 3. Oh. So double click on it. Make sure it shows fully in your window. Few things we will be making changes to. What I want you to do right away, I want you to go to your swatches. Okay, and I want you, the swatches, select from red, select the red swatch. Again, make sure everything else is unselected. And hold your shift key. And select the last one in there, like the purple one. That is not in my instructions, but I'm telling you. So. Like this, so it's all selected. Now I want you to trash them. We're not going to use them. Okay, so just click delete swatch it. Tells you delete them, yes. You only want to have white and black. Okay? So select them and trash them. Next, I want you to navigate in the bottom here. I told you the libraries you also have on top window. They are here as well. Swatch library menus. Okay? And I want you to select metal. Okay, metal. From metal. Go ahead, choose the second from top, gold two. Just click on it. So it should add it here to your swatches. Okay, so go ahead and select that metal, click on it, and it should add to your swatches. Now we will create new two new swatches that we will be using. So for the first swatch, uh, what we're gonna do again, make sure everything is unselected. Uh, go ahead, uh, double click on it. And we will be selecting like a reddish shade, but we can adjust later on, maybe a little bit lighter. So if your red was the last one you used, make it go towards the light a little bit. So I'm looking around, I mean, kind of like this, not too much, okay, reddish. Okay, click OK. Then in your swatches, click New Swatch. Okay, so we add that one in. And it tells you New Swatch, click OK. That's it. So you should have like a reddish swatch edit. Don't make it pink. Don't make it too light. It needs to be in the rain, red range. Okay. And then add that in in the bottom here. New swatch. Okay. We ready for next one? Let's do the next one. So double click on that one again. This time you will put precise numbers for me. So in the bottom hexadecimal, I want you to type 337D8C. Now, I did follow the instructions so you can see them as well. You can follow along. Everybody got that? 337D8C. Click OK. Should be like a teal, dark teal shade, blue, whatever it's called. And go ahead and add new swatch. New, and then click OK. So we should have now four swatches on top and then the gold one, the gold two, right? Uh, now we will bring up the appearance panel. Uh, I'm just going to have it all organized. We can leave the characters on here. Uh, we can close the metal library too. Because it's already what we need. So window appearance. Let's bring that up and leave it for now. Now, you can do much more powerful things with fill and stroke in under appearance than you can do actually fill and stroke here. So you can kind of see what kind of cool things you can do with type. So with that, I want you to select the text tool and I want you to change the color to black for now. Okay, black. And we're just gonna uh, type two points somewhere in, not too close to the edge, somewhere here. And I want you to type the word cool, C-O-O-L. Now it's it came out a little bit, let's move it to the middle. So put it right in the middle of that board. We will change a few things with it. So with that text selected, again, click on the type, make sure it's selected. I want you to change the font or the typeface. We will change it to Bauhaus 93. I told you type has funny names. 
Bauhaus 93. I just t type B on my keyboard and pull it up. Okay. Then the size, we're going to make it 120 points. So you can just type it in. 120. Okay. So now if you need to rearrange it again, you can. Or middle. Okay. That looks good for now. Uh, I guess maybe the tracking we can change because it's negative 55. So go ahead and change tracking to positive 60. So let us just click 60 in it. Yeah, that's even better because it's not so close. All right. Good. Next thing we're going to do, we will uh, draw a rectangle behind the text, like a background. So go ahead and select your rectangle M as your command key. And just draw it out like this. Now, right now it's black, yes. Don't worry about putting in the back. Okay, so draw the rectangle and select the bluish shade in your swatches that you created. Okay, then select the rectangle. Make sure you have no stroke, just the fill. Right click on it, select arrange, bring send it to back so it's behind type. So now with this, uh, make sure your text is selected and not the rectangle. So select your type, click on T. I like always clicking on the T tool because I want to make sure it's the text is selected. Okay. Uh, then go ahead. If uh, I accidentally close my appearance panel, so I will open it up. Oh, actually, somewhere. Where are you? There it is. That's my appearance. So uh, with that, we actually will be clicking on, double clicking on the characters in your appearance panel. So I will zoom in for you so you can see it. Okay. And so appearance panel, double click on characters. So it pulls up like this. Uh, go ahead and select the fill. Just click on that. And I want you to trash the fill. So select the trash can. It looks like there's no text. There's text. Okay. But we're doing some magic here. That's what we're going to be doing. All right. So now I want you to, uh, and I've noticed this is kind of funny. Um, I did it a couple times and it's kind of funny. So what I did, I actually clicked back with the selection tool, clicked it outside of it. Don't ask. It's just the way it is. Okay. And then click back, find the text, click it back on it. That's the way, just work with me, okay? There's text. We're gonna bring it back. Be like magic. Okay. Then go to your characters and click on the characters. Don't double click, just click once. Okay. And then we will create new fill, like right on the bottom of appearance. It says at new stroke, at new fill. Click on that. Look at that. We brought it back. You're probably like, so why did we delete it? Because we couldn't do only of those effects if we didn't do it that way. We had to go inside the character and delete that fill and apply a different one. I don't know if that makes sense. You'll see when you practice. When you do it wrong, you're going to know why it doesn't work. Okay? <laughs> and then from the fill, go ahead and select your reddish shade. Now, if it looks really bad, that means you need to adjust your swatches. So if your red is like hurting your eyes with that blue, you can go ahead and edit the swatches. I'm actually going to make my teal. Red is fine. Maybe make it a little bit lit. Okay, I'm going to edit that a little bit and my teal as well. Oh, accidentally clicked on the wrong thing. See what happens? So adjust that. It would be nice if I yes wasn't clicking on here. So there, red. So now we will select the stroke, change the shade of the stroke under the appearance panel to medium gold and the weight to four points. And you can see that actually that stroke increased from the center inside the shape, inside the red. So we will have to offset it to just sit on the edge. So with that stroke still selected, I want you to navigate to FX on the bottom, it says FX, add new effect, click on that and select path 
offset path. Okay. Now you would have to type because we, uh, is your showing them points? Okay, so you're gonna just click the number. We will offset it by two points. I have to type two P PT. And you can do preview. So what it that did, it actually moved the stroke on the outside of our letters, not in, inside it. That's what we did, okay? And do okay. Now, with that stroke still selected, we will duplicate it. So right now it's duplicated uh, one. Go ahead and click on the pull down menu on the side and select duplicate item. So we created a second stroke. Now we will decrease, uh, we will change a few things of the stroke. We will change the color of the gold. Just some effects you can see. Again, we only do working with stroke and fill. Okay. And let's select the light gold shade. Okay. Then uh, we will decrease the size of that. Can you see that? You probably can see it on mine as well. But you can see that color in there? Okay. So we can do between one point to half a point. You can actually put half a point from here or 75. Make it very thin. But guess what? We don't want to offset it. So click on the offset path on that second stroke and then click delete it. So now we have, if I zoom in, we should have a lighter stroke and then a darker one. Is that how it looks like? Okay. Then, guess what? Select it again. Make sure you don't have select the path. Make sure it says type. And select the top stroke again. I mean, you have to click on it. Now, this may come up. That's fine. Just check it again. And I want you to duplicate it again. <laughs> so we're going to duplicate it. So go ahead and duplicate item, the stroke. Okay. We leave the points as they are. But I guess we can even we can leave it this way. And But I want you to offset the path this time for this one, uh, because we want to put that stroke on the outside of that medium gold. So with that selected, go to effects, effects there, path, offset path. And uh, do this one we're going to offset by four points, and you can do the preview to check it, four point, PT. And you can see now that it should sit like you have several stroke, right? And the lighter ones are inside and outside, okay? Now, <laughs> even more, uh, we have the last stroke selected so we know to put it on top. Click on that one. And what we're gonna do, we will create a completely new stroke on top of it, okay? So click on new, add new stroke right there in the bottom of the appearance panel. Okay, and I want you, when you click on it, change the, uh, change the stroke color to white. That's why you needed the white swatch. Okay. Now the size, we will increase it, maybe four, four. I thought I put three, but yeah, we're gonna change it anyway. So let's put, let's put three for now. Doesn't look really good right now. What we're gonna do, we're gonna add some like lights. So they're not really round right now, so we can make some choice uh, changes. If you double click or you click on the stroke, the underline stroke, you bring out this option, okay? Now the weight will probably increase it to like six points. So just click on that name stroke, right? Then we will click on Cap, round cap, because we want it to be rounded. And they will continue. We want them rounded joint, so it's not a sharp edge. And then click on the dashed line. Right? Notice it's changing already. And then on the dashed line, we will do one point dash with 12 point gap. So it looks like a little light. So notice how many strokes do we have now for this? 
One, two, three, four. Four strokes, right? Did you do that before? Appearance panel allows you to do all kinds of things. So make sure you're on this part. Again, I did put that in the notes. Okay. Now, we want to put those lights right in the middle where you have the fixed stroke. So we need to offset it. So with that stroke being still selected, go ahead and click on FX. And then select offset, path, offset, path. Okay. And I'm going to do preview. We don't want to have it that much out. <laughs> so we will put offset of two points, two PT. Okay, and you can see. So it needs to be right in the middle there. And then do OK. Okay. The next thing we will do with this one, we will add, I mean, to make the lights look like realistic, we need to add some glow to it. So with that stroke selected, we are going to go to uh, effects again. So continue effects, stylize, not this, I'm sorry, not Photoshop effects, Illustrator effects, stylize, and we will select inner glow. Okay, stylize inner glow. Now, a few options here we will play with. Again, you can choose your own, but I, that these came out really good for me, so I'm gonna use that mode. We will do normal, okay? And the color we will choose from here, click on the color, choose like a really bright yellow, like a neon yellow. Mine may not show with the projector, but choose very bright yellow. Oh, you can see that's kind of bright. Okay, very bright yellow. My bright yellow is like four F's and two C, if that's what you have, okay? Click OK, and make sure you click preview so you can see it. Right now it's way too yellow and it doesn't look any good. So we have to make some more manipulations. We have to d change the blur size to maybe like two points. I'm gonna take change two PT, okay? So just type two PT. So it's not, it's just on the outside, okay, like a edges of it, okay? Now, do you see the difference between center and edge? Make sure it's still on edge. So this is what I did. Okay, that's inner glow. Everybody good with inner glow? Right, next we are going to do add some outer glow. Because we want it to go on the outside. So with that stroke, again, make sure it's selected. I will go back into FX, stylize, outer glow. And now in the outer glow, we will use the screen multiply. So mode multiply. Color we're gonna use, it's like a warmer shade. Actually, let me see. Because actually, maybe we can use normal. Let's use normal. So I think that's what I had on my notes. So mode normal, sorry, not multiply. Then color, we're going to use a lighter yellow. So not bright yellow, but like light yellow. That makes sense? Before we had like a... Like a light yellow. Kind of like that. And mine looks lighter than it is on the screen. I mean, it looks lighter on the projector than it is on the screen. So kind of you can see the numbers. And then do OK. Again, I will do preview so you can see. There's some glow already happening right now. And uh, we will adjust a few things. Opacity, we can play with between 70, 75. So I'm going to lower mine. And then blur is one point. So I'm going to double click on the point and do one point PT. Point. Okay. So something on the outside that's glowing. So this is what I have, very small increments, out of glow. And then go ahead and click OK. We will duplicate this glow. So when you do it, when you finish that glow, click on that outer glow again on here. And then select duplicate item. Now, is that looking really good to you? <laughs> That means we have to manipulate it, okay? So once you duplicate it, 
select it. You can click preview. And we will change our mode from normal to multiply. That's going to make it a little bit lighter. Okay? Notice the difference already, right? By just changing the mode. Th this is called the blend mode. So we change the blend mode from normal to multiply on that second glow. And go ahead and change the opacity to... Actually, let me think. Maybe we can play with it. Just play with the opacity, see if you need to make it... Uh, probably, don't be more than 75. So again, between 70, 75. Or maybe lower. I'm going to try different measurements. Let me try 10%. Let's see. Ah! Well, I need it to glow a little bit, so it's up to you how strongly you want to do it. Uh, I know on my thing I said like 10, 11, but now another thing we need to change is the color. So instead of that light yellow that we duplicated, let's make it more... Uh, darker yellow, okay? So click on that color and then make it a little bit darker. And th the same color scheme. Okay, that's it. So around this, these measurements, you can follow the ones I have on my instructions, so follow these. I mean, you can make it smaller if you want. So it gives a little halo around the text. I, can, I don't know if you can see that on a pr uh, projector, but it should be showing. Okay. okay, yellow lights. Then, okay, we're almost done. Now, some of you are like, oh, I was done a long time ago. No, I'm just <laughs> Right, I told you it's a lot of small steps. It's hard to miss it. Okay, now with this one, uh, we will select the fill. And with the fill, you can do this even if you miss the other steps. Okay, so if you're behind on the other steps, you can still do this one if you have your fill. Select the fill and go ahead and navigate to FX and we will stylize uh, inner glow for that one. You're like, what? We're glowing the inside? Yeah, we will, but not the way you think. So inner glow. Change the mode to multiply. You can preview. So you can see it. Change the the color to almost black, not bl quite black, but almost black, okay, like a darkish gray. Right? She was okay. But we don't we want to give a little bit of depth to it, right? And opacity. Uh, let's make it eighty percent. Blur, we can play with the measurement between three to four points. So we can do four and see how it looks like. And that's, you know, that's it. And you are done with cool. We can go save it. Now, if you feel like some of the yellows are too bright and you can make them lighter, then you can go ahead into those strokes. And I'll probably make the second one. You know, we can play with those and then measurement. So that is uh, for this part. Of the, for the last part of your assignment, you need to design a logo for your name. Oh, your name. This is like a preliminary thing because you are a brand of you. Hassan or Hassan, the two of you, a brand of Hassan. Okay, so you need to be able to show it to the world. And I give you an instructions for like examples of the logos, right? So you will need to research various logos and names. Just look at them, like Google personal logo designs, right? So you can go to internet and look at them. I actually, my name has a logo. So if you look me up, say Twitter, I'm there. You notice I have a logo and it has text. And it has the shape. Anybody can spot the shape? My pencil. Okay. I'm an illustrator. So, obviously, text and I adjust it. You can see the spacing and all that stuff. So, think about this. What kind of 
I mean, text you want to use, you can download um, font and in the instructions, I told you where to get the fonts. One is Google fonts or 1001 free fonts. So I can show you how to download it really quickly. It's very easy. Google slash fonts dot com. Now, this is not the name of the type. This is just example. So you can that's where I got mine. So my name that I showed you, that's where I got my text. Right. You need to have a Google account to do that. But if you, when you do, you can just click on it. Now, if I feel like you need more time, like in 20 minutes, when you're not finished, I'll give it to you because it's your name. It's names are important, right? So if you're not finished 20 minutes, um, or you think you are, let, let me see it. If not, I'd be happy to extend this. Since it is your name, you want to take some time. Think about color scheme. What kind of color? Um, really, you don't want to make it like a lot of colors because it has to be reproduced cheaply. In my name, I only had like one color. You don't have to have it. You, have, you can have shades of gray, black. Okay. Uh, so no more than two fonts for your logo. Okay. And combine, I mean, ma make it manipulated and make sure you have different text copies, entire space, add simple shape. And make sure when you finish, you convert to outlines. So that way I can actually open it. When you download it, I won't be able to. Okay. And that is what you'll be submitting. So let me show you how to download the uh, fonts. So add collection. So we have already have a font and it shows me it's right here that I added to my collection on the bottom. So I can click on the bottom. You see that? Use. So once I click on the font, add to collection, I can use it. And it tells me a few things. What it is. How can I use it? Right now it's all links. So you have to download it, right? So if, again, it helps if you have your account so you can actually put it in and download the font. So let me see if I can log in to this. Oh, maybe actually after we can do choose, maybe let's say choose. Go back to my use. There should be a download option. I'm trying to find it. I downloaded mine. Anybody sees the one? <laughs> Let's see. Right here, it's kind of funny how they don't have good instructions for downloading. But right here it says download. It's like the when you do use and download, it tells you download the font. So how do you want it to download? My font finally is in your collection as zip. Okay. So it's gonna be a zip file. And I'm going to do save file. Now, if you save it, it's going to be in your download. So watch what I'm doing. Download. Then I will go into my downloads. I have a lot of things in it. And this was, it already unzipped it for me. So it's infinite wooden floor. Oh, um, hmm? oh, no, it's on the wrong one. That's not this one. I think actually let me look open it here that might be easier so from here I just open it from the top so it's monstrat so there when I double click on it I have several of them so the only thing you have to do is select both double click and it's gonna tell you this install that's it on a Mac on the Windows you know how to do that because I don't <laughs> And we have my font, and now that name should show up now in Illustrator. Monstrat, let's see. If I type it, let's see if I find Monstrat in my list. Sometimes, sometimes you have to close the program and launch it again to show up. So if you don't see it in your list, okay, make sure you quit it and relaunch it. So it will be there. Okay, but it should be there. Either you quit it or relaunch it. So that's it for your assignment. And don't forget, project one is you as well. Next week. Thank you.